Now, uh, as I mentioned before, Bill Allison, uh, because of a last minute conflict, wasn't able to be here. So I will be speaking in his place. I, I'm Daniel Schumann uh, with the Sunlight Foundation and also director of the Advisory Committee on Transparency. So um, I ask that you uh, press me as I make these points, but not too hard because I don't have all of the, the fine grained details at my fingertips. So what I'm going to speak about is access to congressional ethics information. Um, there are, there's a lot of material that is required both by the House and Senate rules to be publicly available. Uh, they are maintained on the House side by the House Clerk's Office and on the Senate side by the Senate Office of Public Records. But if you've ever had the experience of trying to get your hands on these documents, it's not, a, not as easy as you would think. First of all, you can't get them online for the most part with the exception of uh, a handful of, uh, except with the exception of lobbying disclosure information. Most of these documents you need to go to the basement of the Cannon Building or into the Hart Building uh, on the Senate side and go and request the documents. Now they are stored in an electronic format, but don't bring your thumb drive, don't bring a CD-ROM because they will not give it to you uh, in electronic format. The only way to obtain these files is to pay, I think it's seven or eight cents a page and print every single one of them out. Uh, this can take hours and costs a significant amount of money. Uh, in the electronic age, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Now, you know, some of these records, of course, um, uh, you know, all of these records have already been decided that they should be publicly available. Um, but what we're, ha what we're seeing here is sort of a practical obscurity that the reality is that it's very, very hard to get. Uh, our colleagues over at uh, another organization, they go through this, this very process. They print out the documents. It takes them three or four months to um, input all of the data. And then they release information as to uh, pers uh, personal financial disclosure forms for members of Congress. This is just sort of, this is just one example of the many different types of information that's available in these documents. Other examples include, so let's say that you're a member of Congress and you're retiring. Um, if you start negotiating for another job or you enter an agreement for another job after your time in Congress ends, you're required to file a form which is a, uh, it's called a post-employment negotiation form. And then when you have a conflict of interest that arises, you have to file a second form, which is, I think it's called a conflict of interest form or some uh, variation thereof, which then causes that first form to be made publicly available. So now, okay, now you know this particular member has a conflict because they're, you know, they're negotiating to work for Halliburton and they're, and they're working on the defense, uh, the defense Committee or something along those lines. But of course, how would you find out that this document is now publicly available? The answer is, if you call and you say, what's become publicly available? Um, the answer is you actually have to come down and take a look. Uh, and of course, if you wanna make these documents available online, um, you have to scan them yourselves and put them online. There are uh, a number of examples of documents along these lines. Now, the Senate does a fairly decent job of cataloging them. There is 10 or 15 or so. And they publish a book that's available to staff, which we happen to have and we've made available online. The House, at least as far as I can tell, doesn't have a similar catalog of these ethics documents. Now, at a minimum, people should, should be able to know before they, come, uh, before they have to come to the Hill as to what public documents are available. Uh, it would make sense if these documents are available in electronic form, which many of them are, either in a database or in PDF, that you should be able to obtain them uh, in their electronic form and not have to, to pay to print them out, to type them in, to turn them into a database. So I'm sure that Bill would be able to say this much more eloquently than I am. Uh, he's gone through this exercise many more times than I have. Uh, but having done it at least a couple of times, um, you know, it's certainly worth considering, one, what information should be disclosed? Are there, is there other information besides what's in these, these ethics reports that should be publicly available? The nature of how they're made publicly available? Uh, one thing that the House has done very well recently, and the Senate will be doing soon, is they've taken uh, the House expenditure reports and soon the Senate expenditure reports uh, and are making them available online so you can see all sorts of different kinds of things. So for example, recently an analysis of the House expenditure reports, I think it was by roll call, revealed that CAO was spending an inordinate amount of money on temps. Um, it is unclear why they were spending so much money on temps, but they had had a conversation with the committee that was responsible for doing oversight and had changed the threshold requirement for reporting above the level which spending on temp staff salaries would be reported. So the oversight committee would have no idea whatsoever that they were spending all these money on temporary employees. Now this could point to a number of things. Maybe they're having trouble retaining staff. Maybe they're just having trouble hiring staff. Maybe, you know, 
the possibilities here are endless, but, what, but without proper disclosure in this particular uh, facet, um, there is no way that the oversight committee would, would have been able to find out uh, what was going on. Uh, and, and with that, you know, we will talk about this a little bit more in a couple minutes, and uh, I'd like to introduce Harlan Yu, who will be speaking about uh, access to uh, federal court records.